This is Umar from the Fight Wire, proudly sponsored by Gold Star Promotions. My first interview on the channel, actually. We're here. What a way to kick it off. What we've already earned. Let's be honest, numbers wise, part of a very select group of one. Eddie, just to start off, I want to get your thoughts on what you did well, as in Matrim, uh, in 2023, and one thing you can improve on for 24. I think you can always improve. You know, you can always make better fights, better cards. I think our back end of the year was sensational. Like, no one could match us. First half was good, but PBC had a great run. You know, others put on good shows. But I think that run we had, you know, encompassing Taylor Cameron, Wood Warrington, the Monaco show, Bam against Sonny, Devin Haney against Regis Progre, the Day of Reckoning in Saudi Arabia. You know, I think, I think we had a fantastic 2023 as a whole. But yeah, improvements always, you know, always look to make better shows, better production. Um, and that's what we hope for 2024. Anything specific? Not really, no. I think you've got to think about how you can improve the shows. I think the shows are very long. You know, you start a show at four o'clock. The main event comes on at 10.30, 10.45. I think moving forward, there's a little bit of a mindset that that main event should start closer to 9 p.m. And maybe we should condense the cards a little bit. I don't know. That like, just, I think you've just got to stay thinking. You've got to, you've got to stay... Um, you know, versatile, always look to improve and, and ways in which you think you can give a better experience for the live viewers and also those watching on TV. Of course, the epicentre of boxing now is Riyadh season mm. and they move so quickly. For you guys to be at the table, invited to the party now, that's a, that's a huge thing for Matram. Yeah, um, obviously we've had a relationship in Saudi before. We've had two heavyweight world championship fights there. The shift of power has, has obviously moved um, to a different direction and it's great to be a part of that now you know first time on day of reckoning now with Joshua and Garnu and you know I think that obviously there's been a lot of uh, publicity about myself and Frank working together but it's such great opportunities for all of our fighters and stables like if you look at Fury against Usyk we're gonna have a couple of fights on that card obviously this one there's Queensbury fights on that we're all working together to say how can we deliver the best night for the fans, the best event for His Excellency and Riyadh season, and how can we get the best opportunities for our fighters? And you know, right now you've got to say that what they've done in what four or five months has been incredible. I vaguely have an idea and understanding of you know His Excellency and Riyadh season will come up with fights and fight cards they want, and then sort of talk to to George Warren, and then George will go out to other promoters and and get get fights mm. made, but. For the viewers, how does it all work with you guys working together, especially you and George, Eddie? Yeah, I mean, you know, last time, for example, when we finished the Day of Reckoning, myself and George would go to His Excellencies and we'd sit down and it's, it's almost like championship manager. You know, you're all working together to say, how can we deliver the best nights? And we'll all brainstorm in the room. You know, don't forget, Joshua had signed to fight Deontay Wilder. And that was the plan. We were announcing that night. Um, and then after that, you know, we, we had an immediate meeting to say, that fight can't happen. What is the biggest fight we can deliver for March 8th? And that was Joshua and Garner. And it happened very quickly. And, you know, like I said, every fight, every card is special. What is George like to work with? George is great. You know, I think uh, he's not interested in the media. He's not interested in interviews. He just wants to do his work, do his business. So, you know, his dad, obviously, is the, the, the front guy, if you like. But a lot of the work behind the scenes is done by George. Our relationship's been good for a couple of years and it's kind of brought myself and Frank together if you like like he was the parent that brought us together and said right you two stop it we've got a great opportunity here let's work together and make these huge events in terms of the main event uh, in March with Joshua Ngannou at Riyadh season what are the dangers with Francis Ngannou Eddie I think the main danger is he does he has no fear but like he, he hasn't been around long enough to realize the danger that he's in in these fights like he, he's so confident that he can walk through these guys. And to have your professional debut and do what he did to Tyson Fury, you know, I, I thought he deserved to win the fight. If he didn't, it was a draw or he lost by a round. But that was his professional debut. So the confidence now coming off that fight into the AJ fight is going to be dangerous. And you know he's a huge guy. He punches very hard. But I just think AJ will be too much for him. He'll be too smart. Um, he'll hit too hard. And I, I do believe he'll stop him. As you said, and, and all the viewers, that was the best Anthony Joshua I've seen in a while against Otto Varlin. As naturally, people make comparisons of Fury's win over Varlin. Joshua did better it, quite clearly. Um, you believe he's going to better Fury's win over Ngannou. So, 
is that the, the kind of idea you guys, His Excellency, to push sort of that, that fight with Joshua and Fury? Fury comes through, because Joshua's better, better mm. in Furies in these fights. If he can do it again with Ngannou, does that force it more? Yeah, I, th I feel that if, um, if AJ beats Ngannou well, stops him particularly, and Fury beats Usyk, like the clamour for that fight for the undisputed championship is going to be so big. I can't see His Excellency looking in any other direction. I mean, I know there's rematch clauses and contracts that need to be respected, but let's be honest, that fight will be right in front of us. And yeah, it's not a strategy for us to go out and beat Fury's opponents that he struggled with not, better. It looks like it. No, but it, listen, it's a great narrative and, and I think it shows our progression. I mean, look, what he did to Otto Wilding, he, he made that almost a mismatch. Fury was lucky to win that fight. The same applies to Ngannou. If AJ can do a job, it'll just build that fight bigger and bigger. But everyone's got their own plans at the moment. But I do think, you know, I, I believe that AJ is on his way to become an undisputed world heavyweight champion. I think he's going to beat Francis Ngannou. And whether he gets Hergovic next or whether he gets Tyson Fury, I, I believe he's going to go for everybody. And uh, this is kind of like the one where it's not full of reward on the other side, this fight. This is a dangerous fight for the reasons of, if you lose to France and Garnu, where do you go? Especially coming off a great year that he had. So he's got to be switched on for this fight. I said that because at a time during sort of the Franklin fight, the Hellenius fight, there did seem to be a real gap there between Fury and Joshua, mm. Joshua especially from the public. But I feel that getting closer and a good win over Ngannou, I think that gap does close in the public's perception. Yeah, I, I think the public will get bigger. I mean, they're already going mad for that fight after Wilding. But if he does a job on Ngannou in a high-profile fight, I think you know we're going to have no choice but to see Fury against AJ. Wilder, for me, that turnaround's too quick anyway for Deontay Wilder. He really needs to go away now and you know come to terms with his performance and what he wants to do in the sport because it wasn't good enough you know and it's not a performance that shows that he can beat those top guys and that's what he's all about a couple of more things away from this eddie uh, what's the crack with victor conte i don't know like it's like someone's given him a few quid and said just keep going at eddie hearn like non-stop it's, it's all day every day um and you know i just had to let him know the other day that I don't, you know, he talks about hypocrisy. I mean, Victor Conte is unquestionably the most prolific drugs cheat in the history of athletics and, and possibly sport. So this is a guy that single-handedly attempted to ruin athletics and ruin the careers and lives of many athletes that he convinced to dope. But now he's a saviour and everything's fine. It doesn't really work like that. But we need to improve and we need to give it. I don't like his association with Vardar. I think that's a terrible look. Has he said anything valid to you or not, do you think? I think, you know, the, the distribution of the science from the Conor Ben situation is something that happens once the legal cases and the hearings are over. Whilst they're ongoing, does, do you really think that our lawyers or Conor's lawyers will be advising that we just give out the information from the ongoing hearing that's still happening with the appeal to the public? Like, that would put Conor in a terrible position. Conor wants to have that conversation with the public. He wants that to come out. But he can't do that while there's ongoing appeals following our victories from the British Boxing Board of Control. If I say Victor Conte, what comes to mind? It's not, it's not a good one for this interview, you know. The, the, yeah, I don't know how, how blue this channel is, but it might have to be bleaked out. Toxic. There you go. In many ways. Just the last one, a bit of a heavy one as well. What's the situation with the Sky and Boxer legal case, Eddie? Nothing. I mean, look, we've... Obviously, there was an article about, so, you know... I'll let them worry about their business, but for us, you know, it was mentioned about our legal case with, with Sky and Boxer and Joshua Boatsy as well, and yeah, that is ongoing. You know, we had a contract with, with Joshua Boatsy, and I don't believe in holding fighters back, but at the same time, when you've invested in fighters for many, many years, you just expect that same return of investment in terms of their loyalty and their honesty. Um, we feel that, you know, the contract wasn't honoured, and as a business, you have to... Um, make sure that that's respected and that's what we're doing so that's ongoing obviously we had the situation with Akoli and this is the same people involved the same ill advice and the same outcome as well do you think it'll be resolved quickly uh, yeah I mean who knows who knows okay A quick prediction for Joshua Ngarno ready I think AJ will stop him inside eight rounds okay speak soon cheers